I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. Well, the official tally is in. The RV industry produced 600,240 units in 2021, smashing the previous record 2017 total of 504,000 by 19% and beating 2020's production by just under 40%. And if you think the RV boom is strictly pandemic driven, you only need to look at the numbers over the course of the last decade. RVing has been on a steady incline for years now. There's no question that the pandemic gave this lifestyle a boost, but don't expect things to return to some pre-pandemic norm anytime soon on dealer lots or in campgrounds. We've seen multiple press releases in the past week touting record crowds at RV shows, including the Florida RV Super Show in Tampa, which brought in more than 80,000 people. RVing is going to be big for the foreseeable future, and the industry plans to put out just as many RVs this year as last. That said, used RV values are beginning to stabilize. According to analysts at BlackBook, trailer auction values have been fairly steadily declining since August, and motorhomes have been dropping since October. That's pretty normal for this time of year, as fewer people camp during the colder months, but values are still elevated dramatically from their pre-pandemic highs. The average model year motorhome sold at auction in December was a 2009, while the average trailer was a 2016. All that RVing is, of course, keeping campgrounds busy. Campgrounds of America, or KOA, saw its best year on record in 2021, with a 33% increase in revenue over 2020. The 60-year-old company added 26 new franchise locations last year, 13 of which were new construction contracts, indicating the demand for new campgrounds continues to be high. We're seeing lots of new campground development across the country, but we're also seeing a lot of pushback from communities, which means a good portion of that development is just big corporations buying up old campgrounds and turning them into more expensive resorts, which is fine, but there's definitely a need for more campsites out there. And while private campground expansion is slow moving, amongst government-ran campgrounds, development is even slower. Case in point, South Dakota's immensely popular Custer State Park. A proposal would have brought 176 new campsites on 75 already developed acres of the park. That proposal has dropped to 66 sites and still might not get through approval from South Dakota's legislature. The reasoning? An environmental study needs to be done to understand how the new campsites will affect wildlife, but also legislators are arguing that these 66 sites will take business from private campgrounds around the park. And this is stuff argued on the floor of the legislature of the state, not in meetings of the parks department. New government campgrounds are few and far between, even with the boom in RVing. There is a lot more news ahead, but first, this episode is sponsored by our friends at RoadPass, makers of the Togo RV app. Download it for free on Apple or Android and use it for RV maintenance reminders and checklists and storing all the data about your RV. They have all kinds of RV ownership information, including a new course from Abby and myself on RV buying. If you like the app, you can get a RoadPass Pro membership, which unlocks all of the premium features of the Togo RV app. It's $49.99 a year and gives you turn-by-turn -turn RV GPS routing, lots of great discounts on things like tires and lithium batteries, and more. A RoadPass membership also includes premium features at Campendium, Road Trippers, R Village, along with the overnight RVParking.com database of truly verified boondocking spots. Download the free Togo RV app, and if you decide to upgrade to a RoadPass Pro membership, you can save $10 off with the promo code RVMILES10X. We reported last week from Tampa on lots of focus in the RV industry on electric vehicles, and that's probably a smart thing if electric passenger vehicle sales in 2021 were any indication. Despite inventory constraints, or perhaps because of them, sales of battery-powered electric vehicles hit a new year-end record, according to Kelly Blue Book. In the fourth quarter, full electric vehicle sales jumped 72% year-over-year, with a 4.5% market share. In 2021, nearly 1.5 million electrified vehicles, including plug-in hybrids, were sold in the U.S., with Tesla leading the way with 72% of the electric market and Toyota leading the way in the hybrid vehicle market. 
Toyota's new car sales are now 25% electrified, all hybrids for now. In fact, Toyota's just announced the 2023 Sequoia redesign, which might be a perfect fit for families towing a small or mid-sized trailer. Very few SUVs can tow over 8,000 pounds, but the new Sequoia Standard Hybrid will hit the 9,000 mark with the twin-turbo V6 Hybrid iForce Max powertrain first unveiled on the Tundra. That's pretty great for families in need of three rows of seats. Payload will be the big question that will determine how much you can tow in the real world. And we don't know those numbers yet, but there's available air suspension load leveling, which is great for those looking to tow regularly. In fact, Toyota's press release focused a lot of energy on talking about towing, including their Towtech package that includes trailer backup assistance similar to Ford's F-150 features. Sequoia's many cameras can display multiple exterior angles that are viewable from the 14-inch touchscreen or the available digital display rear view mirror. When towing, you get a panoramic view, which displays a top-down shot of the SUV and the area around it. You also get a rear split view to show what's nearby on each side of the trailer and a hitch view to assist with trailer connecting. And for the first time on Sequoia, there's available power folding, extending, and retracting tow mirrors. You can get it in a four-wheel drive, of course, and with an impressive array of off-road features, including crawl control and a locking rear differential. Despite a brief dip in December and typical low seasonal demand in January, pump prices are on the rise again. The national average for a gallon of gas is $3.35 and the culprit is the rising price for oil, which is now around $85 per barrel, nearly $20 more than in November. Last week, both OPEC and U.S. energy officials said the COVID-19 Omicron variant is no longer expected to slow the continued recovery of petroleum demand in 2022. Despite this, OPEC and its allies are maintaining their planned modest production increases and will not dramatically ramp up output. The result will be a continued tight supply of oil. Typically, pump prices drop in January due to low gas demand and rise in supply, but a steady increase in the price of crude oil has prevented this from happening. Today's national average is $0.07 cents more than a month ago and $0.85 cents more than two years ago, just before the COVID-19 pandemic set in. Finally, our kudos to the 14,000 employees of RV component manufacturer Lippert, who have pledged 100,000 hours of community service each year. Over half of Lippert's employees participate, and after four years, they've logged 550,000 volunteer hours in communities across the world. That's it for this week's news. Let us know your thoughts and opinions by leaving a comment below, and please hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. And remember, likes are free, and they help YouTube's algorithm a lot. Here's last week's news video if you missed it, and here's a great video that you haven't checked out yet. See you next time. Thank you.